For the first time in half a century, NASA is starting to make its way back to a moon landing. Overnight, the Artemis rocket was finally able to launch after prior delays, sending an unmanned capsule around the moon. An actual lunar landing won't happen before 2025. But this was a historic moment for the space agency. And at the same time, there are plenty of questions about the path that NASA has chosen to make this happen. Miles O'Brien reports. Three, two, one, boosters in ignition, and liftoff of Artemis One. NASA's most powerful rocket ever lit the night sky in Florida. The Space Launch System lofted an Orion spacecraft on an uncrewed test flight to orbit the moon. The rocket carries a long backstory of political, financial, technical, and meteorological delays. NASA Launch Director Charlie Blackwell Thompson savored the success with her team at the Kennedy Space Center. I want you to look around, look around at this team and know that you have earned it. You have earned your place in the room. You have earned this moment. You have earned your place in history. It's the Artemis One mission, NASA's first foray in its encore campaign to send humans back to the lunar surface. This time, the agency is promising more than flags and footprints. Why is NASA going back to the moon? Because we do not have the capability of going to Mars. That's former shuttle payload specialist, former Florida senator, and current NASA administrator, Bill Nelson. What we're going to learn living and working on the moon is going to help us. I met Nelson at the Cape in July. Still inside the cavernous vehicle assembly building, the Boeing-built SLS rocket was enveloped in a cocoon of scaffolding so technicians could work through their closeout checklists. What goes through your mind when you see this thing all stacked up in here? The enormity, the amount of energy that is contained in there. As I toured the VAB, I thought about the Saturn V moon rockets. This huge building was designed to house four of them at once. The SLS is 15% more powerful than a Saturn V. It literally and figuratively borrows from the Apollo and space shuttle programs. Its four main engines are modified shuttle leftovers. So too are the twin solid rocket boosters. And the fuel tank design also has strong shuttle lineage. SLS does not push technology that was never part of its sales pitch. It was the opposite. It was because we are reusing shuttle parts, we are going to be able to do this sooner and for less money. Lori Garver was NASA's deputy administrator from 2009 until 2013. In her newly released book, Escaping Gravity, she says Boeing executives promised to deliver a moon rocket in five years for $6 billion. That was 2010. I don't believe these people thought it would be true, but they knew they could sell that to Congress. And who was buying what Boeing was selling? None other than Bill Nelson, then chairman of the Senate committee that oversees NASA. Why has it taken so long? It wasn't a repeat of the stack of the space transportation system, in other words, the shuttle. The Orion capsule had to have all kinds of new sophistication, not the old Apollo stuff. So this is a brand new rocket. And when you design a brand new rocket and build it, it's gonna take time, and it did. Meanwhile, the brand new, much cheaper rockets keep emerging and launching from SpaceX at a much faster rate. The company has its own Moon and Mars ambitions with its heavy lift rocket called Starship. The stainless steel Buck Rogers style vehicle will be fully reusable. Except for the Orion capsule, NASA's new rocket is a completely expendable single use system. NASA's Inspector General estimates the Artemis campaign will cost $93 billion between 2012 and 2025, $4.1 billion for a single launch. This isn't NASA's best foot forward. We are better than this. But what does SLS prove, if anything? I think SLS will prove that we shouldn't be doing things in this way anymore. It is already happening. 
NASA has contracted with SpaceX to build the landing craft, a modified starship, to take astronauts from lunar orbit to the surface of the moon on the third Artemis mission. So you have to wonder, is this the beginning of an era at, at some level, or is it the end of an era uh, of a way of building uh, rocket ships to space? It's the beginning of a new era of both commercial and government joining up in a partnership. It will evolve. Of course, evolution implies a natural selection. NASA's big, gold-plated spaceship may finally be on course to the moon, but it also may be headed the way of the dinosaurs. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Miles O'Brien, still here on planet Earth.